Well, let's get more now on what's being described by experts as a milestone moment in the fight against breast cancer. Scientists say they have a near-perfect picture of the genetic events that cause breast cancer. Well, for more on this, we're joined via Skype from Birmingham by Lawrence Young. That's the Pro Vice Chancellor at Warwick Medical School and, handily enough, a professor of cancer research. Thanks very much uh, for joining us, Lawrence. OK, you are the professor of cancer research. I am the mere newsreader. Tell me, is this the milestone moment uh, that everyone's describing it as? I think it really is. It's, for the first time, we have a comprehensive understanding of all the changes that occur that make a normal tissue, normal breast tissue, become cancer. And how exactly have they identified this? Is this the, the Human Genome Project finally pr providing the dividends that we were all told it would? It really is. It's, it's a comprehensive analysis of the genes, and it is a product of all the technology and understanding that's gone into reading the genome. We all have something like 20,000 genes in every cell in our body. Those genes are made up of something like uh, 3 billion letters. And what this study has done, it's read those 3 billion letters in each of 560 different breast cancer tumours. And uh, so, again, for, for the Luddites amongst us, exactly what have they identified? They've found the, the very specific genes that, uh, if a mutation occurs, that can lead to breast cancer. Yeah, they've identified a set of mutations. There are about 93 different genes that appear to be changed, not in every individual, but are combinations of this core set of 93 genes that can convert a normal tissue into a cancerous tissue. And for the first time, that gives us a comprehensive understanding of what causes breast cancer, but also will help us to think about new ways of diagnosing and treating the disease. Right, so that's, that, that has to be the, the next point that we come on to. So we have identified the, the, the points on the genome uh, that, if mutated, will lead to breast cancer. So, so what happens next? What do we do with this uh, milestone moment and this information uh, that the research has provided? There are two different things we can do. These gene changes show us what are called mutational signatures, and those signatures tell us a lot about what type of factors are causing breast cancer. So as we delve more into those, we should be able to identify opportunities to intervene and to prevent the disease. And that's very exciting. We still don't really understand the main causes of breast cancer. And these changes that have occurred that, that induce mutations provide a clue. So as we delve into those, we'll learn more about what causes cancer of the breast and how we can prevent it. But probably more exciting and more immediate is our ability to use this information in individual breast cancer patients to better diagnose the disease and to identify the optimum treatment. What type of treatment should we be giving breast cancer patients so that, that in that particular individual, the treatment is 100% effective? Uh, but casting our eyes uh, towards the horizon a little, and of course this is going to take an, a number of years, one presumes, uh, before we come up with effective interventions. But when you say interventions, uh, what do you mean? Are we talking about gene therapy? Are we talking about drugs? We're talking about a combination of effects. So in terms of interventions, obviously we have a very sophisticated array of different approaches to treating breast cancer, but we know that the different combinations of drugs and indeed of hormone therapies that we use in breast cancer patients aren't always effective. So what this is going to allow us to do is to identify the unique signature of an individual woman's breast cancer and use that information to target therapy, to use what's called precision medicine so we know how to effectively treat and hopefully cure a cancer in a particular individual. But this inf information will also allow us to think more about preventative measures. We still don't fully understand why breast cancer is so common in the Western world with a risk of one in nine women have a lifetime risk of developing breast cancer. Understanding what changes occur will allow us to think about better ways of intervening to prevent, to think about preventative measures. Uh, well, we cross our fingers and hope that those advancements take place uh, just as soon as possible. Lawrence Young, Pro Vice-Chancellor at Warwick Medical School, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Thank you.